In this video, we're going to talk about the different ways that we can represent a linear inequality. And we're going to have three forms, well, four forms here. We have the inequality itself, we have set builder notation, we have interval notation, and then we have a graph. All right, so this inequality here, x is more than 2. Let's go ahead and write that out in words here. Now, the trickiest part with these is recognizing which, lar what, which value is larger and which value is smaller. And I know for me, I still think about the alligator mouth that I learned way back when in elementary school, uh, that the alligator mouth always wants to eat the bigger thing. Um, that works for me. There are uh, all just so many other types of tricks out there. So whatever helps you of which is larger, but it's that this is more, this is less. So with that set builder notation, we use these curvy brackets and we're just defining that for X, X is more than two. So really we're kind of just copying our inequality notation in this case for set builder notation. This just comes up a lot more later on in math and I want you to see it here, but we're really going to focus on interval notation and graphs, but just so you see it here. Um, so this is just saying X and then that tall line there is just saying is defined by. So we have this variable X and it is defined as X is more than two. Okay. For interval notation, with interval notation, we have two types of parentheses that we're using. We have just regular old parentheses and we have square brackets or a combination of the two. With square brackets, what we're saying is that those endpoints are included. With parentheses, we say the endpoints are excluded. So the key is with this one is that X is more than two it can't be equal to two though. So what we're doing is we're starting at two. So two is the beginning of our interval. And then we can go off to infinity because we can have anything larger than two. We don't want to include two. So we're going to use parentheses with infinity. We always use parentheses because we can't define how big parentheses or sorry, we can't define how big infinity is. We can always go bigger. So with that, we can't really include infinity. So we just always use parentheses. And in terms of a graph, what we'll have here is we'll make a number line and we always go from small to large reading left to right. So I'm just going to put two in the middle here and then maybe two numbers below two numbers above. So there's one zero three, four. And what I want to do is show with my graph that we're starting at two and then we're going to go off to positive infinity. And because we aren't including two, we're going to use an open circle there. And then from there, we can have anything larger than two. So this just shows that we're going to get infinitely close to two. Like we can get to 2.00001. We could be right there. We just can't be at two itself. So when we're graphing, we'll use open circles and solid circles, and it'll just depend on whether or not we're including those endpoints, just as we're doing with those parentheses in interval notation. So this one looks like X is more than two, but then that line underneath also means that we have equals. So X is more than or equal to two which in set builder notation, again, we'll just have our brackets. X is defined by X is more than or equal to two. Now with this one, same scenario of we're starting at two and then we're going off to positive infinity, but and with infinity, we always use parentheses, but now we're including two because X can equal two. So we're going to use a square bracket there. And in terms of our graph, the only thing that's going to change is the type of circle that we're using. So I'm still, I'm going to go ahead and put two in the center there, get some numbers there so that we know the direction we're going in. 
and we'll have a solid circle at two now because we can include it and then everything to the right hand side for anything larger than or equal to. All right, similar idea here, but now we're at x is less than two. So with that set builder notation, we'll just kind of copy down like this. And now what we'll have is x can be anything smaller than two. So two is our largest value. Our smallest value is going to be negative infinity. And with negative infinity, we also always use parentheses because we can't capture it because it could always be smaller. And this we're not including two, so I'm going to use parentheses there. And then for a visual, we'll have our similar setup here, but now we're going to be going to the left hand side. And we'll be using an open circle again because we don't have the equals. All right, then here is x is less than or equal to. And set builder notation, we'll just kind of copy that down. And then here we're going negative infinity to positive 2 again. Use parentheses with negative infinity every single time. And this time because we have the equals, we'll use a square bracket. So our graph, pretty much the same. We're just going to change the circle that we're using to be closed now because we're including 2. Close circle at two, and then everything below. All right, so there's kind of the structure that we're going with. Then we can have x trap between two values. Let's, oh, well, let's just go ahead and write down the set builder notation for all of these because it's just going to be copying with those. And last one, x is defined by negative 1 is less than x, less than or equal to 2. Okay, so with these where x is trapped between two values, what we can do is we'll write the lower value, comma, larger value. Lower value, comma, larger value. Lower value, comma, larger value. Then our brackets are going to depend on the symbols that we see. So because we have equals with this first one, we're going to be using square brackets. This next one is only, uh, it does not have the equals part, so we'd be using parentheses. And this one's a mixture of the two, so where we don't have equals, we'll use a parenthesis, and then where we do, we'll use a square bracket. So with that, that tells us how we're going to use our parentheses to show our intervals of whether or not we're including those endpoints. Then from there, we can create our graph. And similar idea here of which bracket we're using will tell us which circle to use. So let's go negative 1, 0, 1, 2. As I number these up, okay, so this first one where we have a square bracket, we'll have a closed circle and square bracket, so closed circle, and then we're in between those two circles. This next one uses parentheses, so we'll have an open circle, open circle, and connect in between. And then this one, we have an open circle at negative 1, closed circle at positive 2. And then we're between. All right. Then, when we have all real numbers, there's a few ways we can write this. We can write x is defined by, and then you could just write x is all real numbers. That works great. But just to show you some notation that's used later on in math, 
something you might see is x belongs to the real number set. So some pieces here. So this symbol right here just means belongs to. And then this symbol here with a capital R with an extra line just means the real number set. So this set of real numbers, x is part of it. For interval notation, what we're showing is that x can be anything from negative infinity to positive infinity, and then we always use parentheses there. And then in terms of a number line, it's a little strange, but what we would show is you would just make any old number line, and we would just shade in absolutely everything. Like that. Okay, and then if there were um, something we'll see is no solutions, we'll talk about that when we get to the next video. All right, so just some scenarios of graphing and representing in interval notation. And sometimes it's easier to graph first and then make the interval notation, or some of you might like doing the interval notation first and then making the graph. I tend to be pretty visual when it comes to things, so I like to start with the graph, and then that helps me form uh, the interval notation. So this right here is telling me x is more than 4. So with that, if I make a graph, then we're at 4, and then some numbers above, some numbers below. We don't have equals, so we'll have an open circle at 4, and then we want the larger values. And from there, I can see my interval starts at 4 and then goes off to positive infinity. Use parentheses with infinity, and then we'll use parentheses with 4 because it's not equal to. This one, x is less than or equal to negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my graph. Let's see, I'll see negative 3, 2 values below, 2 values above. And because we have equals, we'll have a solid circle. And then because it's less than, we'll go off to the left-hand side with those smaller values. So with that, our interval is starting out at negative infinity and then ends at negative 3. We'll have parentheses with infinity, square bracket with negative 3. And this last one here, so x is going to be between negative 2 and positive 5. So let's see, I want to see negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, squish it in there. Okay, so at negative 2 we're going to have a solid circle. At positive 5, we'll have an open circle, and then we have anything in between those two values. So we're starting at negative 2, ending at positive 5, and we'll have a square bracket with negative 2, parentheses with positive 5. So there's all the different ways we can represent linear inequalities.